Good evening and welcome. You're watching the 7 o'clock news on CNC3. I'm Maria Rambley. I'm Ryan Beju. I'm Jassy Marik with Sport. And I'm Colleen Hussain with your weather. Let's tell you what's making the news tonight. He's in a lot of pain, but he's stable. It is not life threatening. Suspect in custody for shooting the bodyguard of Deputy Prisons Commissioner. Police Social and Welfare Association puts its members on high alert after an officer's home is shot at. After once recording the highest murder toll in Trinidad, the Northeastern Division boasts of less murders this year. Coming up in sport, Fatima College hammers QRC at home to remain in the hunt for the boys' SSFL Premiership title. Hot temperatures continue across Trinidad and Tobago, but to our east, some tropical trouble is brewing. I'll have the details in tonight's weather forecast. One person is in police custody tonight and a prison officer in hospital following a botched attack on a senior prison official. Shortly after 7 o'clock this morning when prison officer Steve Phipps went to pick up Deputy Commissioner of Prisons Sherwin Bruce at his home in Barataria, he was approached by three men who opened fire on the prison vehicle which turned into a shootout. When it was over, Phipps and one of his attackers had been hit. We spoke with Acting Commissioner of Prisons Deo Prasad Ramuta while he was visiting the wounded prison officer at hospital. Ramuta calls this an assault on his officers and he tells Otto Carrington he isn't sure whether newly implemented technology played a role in this attack. A failed assassination attempt has left a prison officer in hospital being treated for gunshot wounds and one of the suspects injured and in custody. The attack took place outside the home of Deputy Prisons Commissioner Sherwin Bruce. Prison officer and bodyguard Steve Phipps went to collect the Deputy Commissioner at his Barataria home just after 7 a.m. While Officer Phipps was waiting in the prison detail vehicle, two cars pulled up and three masked men came out and opened fire in his direction. Phipps was shot twice in his arm. However, he was able to return fire, hitting one of the assailants. Visiting prison officer Phipps at the Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex, Acting Commissioner of Prisons Diopasad Ramuta gave an update on his welfare. He's in a lot of pain, but he's stable. It is not life threatening. He's stable, and we're glad for that. And my deputy is just shaken up, but he's unharmed. We have stepped up security for all of our CNC3 News understands one of the suspects was dropped off at the Arima Health Facility for treatment and was then detained by police. He is now helping the police with their investigations. The acting prisons commissioner says he has no evidence that new technology at the prison is the reason for the attack. I have no evidence that that is what they're protesting. It matters to me not what they're protesting. We'll keep doing our job. What is disappointing when I, I will say this? They are biting the hands that are feeding them. He says the line has been drawn. I think the answer is in rehabilitation, getting into the minds and the hearts of those inmates and wrongdoers, getting them to realize and change their wicked ways. That's why my appeal is for those in the underworld, show that you are not supporting of this type of criminality. Draw a line. Help us arrest those persons. Bring them and place them before Fort Aspen Gate. Hand them over to the law enforcement officers. Senior Superintendent Mervyn Edwards, head of the Northeastern Division, speaking at the Trinidad and Tobago Police press briefing, says more arrests will be made soon. We are actively pursuing certain leads in this matter and hope, more than hope, to arrest, to effect an arrest within the shortest possible time. Otto Carrington, CNC3 News. Now, opposition MP Dr. Rudal Munilal is calling for the people who make up this country's criminal intelligence machinery to be fired following this morning's shooting. During the budget debate, Dr. Munilal lamented the state of affairs in this country and he questioned why there's been no statement from the government following the attack. Dr. Munilal said prison officers are considering to walk off the job within the next few hours. The Urupuch East MP said the government only uses its criminal intelligence personnel and technology to monitor the opposition. You know, they know when the UNC holding a protest over the flyover of Monroe Road. They know when we protest in Debe Junction. 
but they don't have intelligence as to who is going to assassinate, attempt to kill a deputy commissioner. Of police. The entire intelligence agency should be fired forthwith. Well, Dr. Munilal told the prison officers to stand their ground, stay on the job, and soon the UNC will be in government to address their concerns. And president of the Prison Officers Association, Jared Gordon, says crime in TNT is out of control. Speaking to CNC3 News, Gordon described the situation against his officer as an attack against all. He said he is relieved, though, that no one was killed. Attack on law enforcement in Trinidad and Tobago, which clearly, for, for us who don't have our heads in the sun, it's clear that Crime and criminality is out of control in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we are happy on one side, happy that the two officers <clears throat> didn't die this morning. And that is a big plus for us. The Prison Officers Association has sent letters to the National Security Minister urging the government to establish legislation in response to the incident. Gordon believes this was linked to the use of cell phone jammers within the prison facilities as no alternative communication system was put in place for inmates to maintain contact with their families. Members that listen, we hear things in the atmosphere, kiss. those things were coming emanating out of the fact that um, with the jammers working as they should, advising members to be vigilant. The Prison Officers Association is calling on the National Security Minister to come up with an urgent plan to protect the prison service. Meanwhile, head of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Social and Welfare Association is calling on police officers to be on red alert, take nothing for granted and be vigilant. Gideon Dixon says the attack on the security guard of the Deputy, Commission's Deputy Prisons Commissioner comes days after an officer's home in Penal was shot up on Sunday night. The officer attached to the Southwestern Division, Dixon, condemned the attack saying he hopes the perpetrators will be caught. Three months after a series of gang-related shootings and murders were recorded in different parts of the Northeastern Division, police are boasting of different successes in the communities. Head of the Northeastern Division, Senior Superintendent Mervyn Edwards says intelligence-led exercises and community outreach made the difference for his division. Shane Zibovil has more. Division to commit crimes, we are going to arrest you. A clear, stern message to criminals from head of the Northeastern Division as he vows to continue a proactive fight against crime. Earlier this year, Mova, Santa Cruz, and Blanche Shares, all communities under the Northeastern Division, saw an uptick in murders and violent crimes. Edwards, however, reports there's been a slight but noticeable drop in the murder toll for the same period last year and attributed the improvements to enhanced patrols and policing strategies. Operation Nisi has been ongoing in the Mova district where I have six soldiers every day at different times patrolling three to five hotspot areas together with the task force, GB, IATF and members of the CID. He notes the Northeastern Division, which once had the highest murder toll in Trinidad years ago, experienced a 4% drop in murders for 2023 thus far when compared to the same period last year. Referring to the firebombing of a house in Mova by gang members in July, Edwards reported that the community has since returned to normal because of sustained police pressure and investigations that led to 17 people being arrested and one charged. There's a calm in the Mova area at one time, and, and sometimes the statistics, we, we don't like to quote it, but for 42 consecutive days there was no reports of serious crime. In addition to crime suppression operations, successes in the division have also been attributed to the work of community policing initiatives to strengthen ties with families. Our community-oriented police officers, throughout partnership with the NWRHA, <laughs> conduct a number of health center visits within the division that focuses on general safety, domestic violence, and child abuse. Even with these different strategies, Edwards stressed the importance of the public's partnership with the police and called for their assistance in crime fighting. He said the help of everyday citizens could lead to the conviction of criminals and possibly save lives. Shane Superville, CNC3 News. 
All right, some news just coming to hand. Police have seized several high-powered assault rifles and machine guns. Our reporter Shane Superville is at the police administration building now where officials are due to address the media on what they say is a major bust. Shane, what can you tell us? All right, hello and good evening, Ryan. Good evening, Ria. Good evening to all of our viewers and listeners. Right now, I'm standing on the fifth floor of the police administration building at the corner of Sackville and Edward Streets in Port of Spain, where officers of the interagency task force uh, would have just returned from a several hours long exercise in Cangrejal in Santa Cruz. The results of that exercise, if you could look behind me, is quite clear. What can only be described as an arsenal of uh, assault rifles, machine guns, high-powered pistols, a quantity of ammunition which they are still in the process of gathering and counting at this time deep in a rural part of Santa Cruz this afternoon. Now the exercise was intelligence-led, it was based on several surveillance and monitoring exercises and may have may be in relation to a shooting that was seen earlier today in Barataria. Um, now, we have several senior police officers here at this time. We have the Commissioner of Police, Ula, here with Christopher. We have the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Oswain Subero, of the Northern Division, together with Senior Superintendent Roger Alexander of the Interagency Task Force, or the IATF. Um, now, as you can see, um, Commissioner here with Christopher here is uh, being um, briefed or rather shown what would have been collected during the exercise here today. Um, we are not quite sure if anyone would have been arrested in relation to this exercise just yet, but we will continue to receive further updates and information as the evening goes on. But just if you can pan out a little bit to see that the amount of weapons, the amount of cartridges, the amount of ammunition that was seized in this exercise covers not only one or two, but actually three tables just to show and display what would have been seized at this time. So we will continue to keep you updated as this progresses and as more information comes to hand. Thanks again. All right, thank you so much for that, Shane. Well, a late night food stop ended with the death of a 28-year-old man and left two others injured. Police say Kelvin Nandram and two other men were buying food on Carlos Street, Woodbrook at around 11.15 when they were shot. Nandram managed to get into his vehicle and drove off, but shortly after on, but stopped shortly after on Carlos Street. The two men, both 22 years old, were also shot and ran to the back of the compound where they hid. Police officers arrived and took Nandram and the two men to hospital when Nandram died. The two others underwent surgery and awarded at hospital. Police found a gun at the crime scene. Education Minister Dr. Nian Gatsby Dolly says it might be time for mandatory national service for repeat delinquent offenders in the nation's schools. In the parliament, Dr. Gatsby Dolly said the government has tried to be patient, but there are still too many children who are violent, disrespectful, addicted to drugs and marijuana, gang members, and completely uninterested in education and out of parental control. The time may have come for Trinidad and Tobago to enter into national discussion about students who are misbehaving at schools despite the best efforts of the ministry to give them that support to change their behavior to be entered into mandatory national service so that they are given the support they need to be developed into productive citizens. Well, Dolly said the ministry has been patient, understanding the disruption COVID would have caused, but if they continue to be disruptive, violent and disrespectful, the Minister of Education will intervene. Still to come in the news, RIC completes price review for electricity, public to possibly know new rate by next week. Months after negotiations collapse, Wigat members threaten to withhold U UE exam papers. Coming up in sport, unbeaten for two years in domestic football, FC Phoenix set sights on playing at the next level. We trust the experts at Bagwin Sings and Dan Steel for everyday value, exceptional quality, and the best brands. To us, there is only one choice for an array of tiles, contemporary bathroom and vanities, ace paints, classy kitchen sinks and faucets, ceiling fans and lighting fixtures to enhance your decor, coolers and grills for outdoor living, power tools to get the job done right, doors and locks to safeguard your investment. Bagwin Sings and Dan Steel, building value every day. 
Encash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use Encash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on Encash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Yes, I accept Encash. I accept Encash. I accept Encash. Find businesses that accept Encash with the nearby business feature. Visit Encash.com to learn more. Download the app and create your wallet today. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Final exams at UE St. Augustine campus could be in jeopardy if negotiations between staff and the government fail to move forward. West Indies group of university teachers rejected the government's 2% offer five months ago and since that, the entire process fell apart. With just three weeks to go before final papers are submitted, Wigat warns that its members have already started taking action. Bavita Gopal Chan has more in this report. Wigat members protested for two months calling for a remit. After waiting almost four years for the process to start, it was only after threatening to withhold midterm exam papers the union received an offer on April 23rd. But relief quickly turned into frustration when they saw what was on the table. We had rejected the, uh, the remit uh, in May. We had rejected that remit of 2%, uh, which, uh, you know, which was for the period 2014-2017. Negotiations then started falling apart. We met with the principal in June. Uh, somewhere in July, we didn't hear anything, we wrote her, and she said that she asked the Minister of Finance for a meeting because there seemed to have been a tussle between the CPO and the Ministry of Education as to who was really in charge. They were told as Corporation so the Finance Minister is in charge of the process. A meeting was carted in August between him and the campus principal. But that meeting did not happen. Now Dr. Indira Rampasad says they're back to square one. She was that over 500 Wigat members have already started pushing back. Basically, a shutdown of all campus and systems operations. You know, so uh, that includes shutdown of the library, the bookstore, marketing and communication, student services, um, you know, the Division of Facilities Management, offices of the principal. These are all part of the October outburst, but next month, their action intensifies. They're going to be final exams again starting in, uh, in uh, December and many of the exam papers are due in November. We've also called for members not to participate in graduation activities and prize giving activities. Graduation is at the end of the month. They're prepared to stand down once an appropriate remit is offered, noting that the Mona and Kefil campuses are presently working for higher salaries. Dr. Rampas had quoted the UE's latest council report, which reveals that there's been a 22% attrition from academics. Contacted for comment, Professor Bell Antoine admitted the situation was worrying. Of course, I must be concerned. Any principal serious about quality assurance and about the development of the country will be concerned because the reasons for the reduction in academic and other staff, permanent academic staff, and staff, of course, is not just teaching, but it's also research and so on. The reason for that is because of financial constraints. The principal could not comment on the impact of Wigat's action thus far, but promised to meet with them on Friday when they protest. The UE St. Augustine Guild of Students President Ashwarya Miraj also says the council has no comment, but says they're committed to advocating for the students' best interest in this situation. Pavita Polchan, CNC3 News. Thousands of residents in East Trinidad are feeling the pain of dry taps following WASA's announcement that it has to ration water. This comes after the authority's acting CEO, Calvin Romain, revealed approximately 10,000 customers served by the Hollis Water Treatment Plant will be affected as the plant's current capacity is significantly below average. Chief Marie Fletcher visited some affected areas and spoke with residents and businesses for this story. From Bonaire Gardens in Aruka, to Cookrit Road in the town of Arima. Customers served by the Hollis Reservoir say Wasa's attempt to ration water will leave them suffering. Take Roland Thomas, for example. When CNC3 visited his recreation grounds road home in Dabadi earlier today, he said his family can barely cook or wash their clothes. Toilet had to flush, clothes had to wash, people had to bathe, then we had to cook. Them women and them, you know, them they want to have place clean and Washing up everything, so them getting real hard. I look like this morning, me and someone on the inside there, his uncle. Real pressure, you know. She just had to go by her husband, family, 
in Port of Spain to do whatever she had to do. Like she might pack her a little bundle and because them night have water down there. Similarly, business owners in the East say not having water is already hitting car washes and food places hard. It's been tough at times because sometimes I no water, I fill my barrel. Sometimes I turn no water and sometimes cars come to wash and I tell them well, you know, either come back later or you know, come back later or another time. I don't have no car to wash, money car and um, things can't function, you know. It is affecting a lot of the businesses and it will continue to affect, especially food businesses, it will definitely continue to affect food businesses because they need to provide water for customers to wash their hands. There's not just the cooking, there's so many other aspects of it. I mean, cleaning up the place at the end of the day, we need water for this. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. In a press conference on Sunday, Wasa's acting CEO, Kelvin Romain, said Wasa has to cut back. While he did not reveal how long the authority will have to ration water, he said the authority was developing strategies to deal with the shortfall. Kimri Fletcher, CNC3 News. The Regulated Industries Commission has completed its price review for electricity, which means the process, which most likely will lead to the public paying more, has taken a massive step forward. News and the completion of the report was revealed by Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez during budget debate in the lower house today. Minister Gonzalez says next week the RIC will reveal the details of its report and possibly the new suggested electricity rate. The minister confirmed with CNC3 News afterwards the report will not need cabinet nor ministerial approval and can be sent straight to TNTEC for implementation. After 13 fire-related deaths this year, Leo Ramkisun is calling on government to set up an inter-ministerial committee to expedite equipment procurement for fire stations. Divisional Fire Officer Dexter Hodge agrees this is necessary. National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines came under fire when he said all fire stations were outfitted with breathing apparatus, a claim disputed by firefighters and the Fire Officers Association. A document obtained by CNC3 News dated October 8th reveals that multiple stations in the Northeastern Division, including Chagaramas, Woodbrook, Belmont, Morva, and Santa Cruz, had no breathing apparatus sets. These stations were also devoid of station and personal face masks. Following revelations that six years after its inauguration, the $71 million penal fire station is ill-equipped, we visited Penal today and asked whether they think government needs to account for failing to equip the Penal fire station. Here's what some of you had to say. Well, is the government responsible for the fire station and if they're not do equipping the fire station? Of course the government failing. And I think it's time we get a change in this country because nothing is getting better for us. And we, the citizens, suffer any consequences. So we need a change. The government is at fault. Yeah, because them responsible for it. Them is the people who should be re responsible and accountable for it. Yes. Because it's of no use. You call penal and then they tell you you had to wait for hours. And then when you realize you see Saparia fire station fabricate that the engine that come in. Penal really, you don't really see them like in actually work or nothing. They need things down here. It's not that they have workers, but where the equipment? Nothing. Yeah, I feel so, yes. Because um, they save lives. You know, because, like, for instance, somebody called the house on fire, and they are, they, they are the people that should come immediately respond to it. You understand? Because a lot of lives could be lost. Of course. The laps are everything beside the fire station in this country. Because it's not functioning properly, right? It's not functioning properly, so, as I said, they laps are everything. Everything just going down, nothing coming up. Well, I find they shouldn't really open it if it makes sense, because if well, they don't have enough money to buy equipment and have enough installments and stuff like that, it makes sense to open. <laughs> In tonight's Business Watch, there is another electronic money provider authorized to operate in this country. Also, Energy Minister Stuart Young speaks with the president of Woodside about the progress of several projects. Peter Christopher reports. Digicel has been awarded a provisional registration by the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago to issue electronic money domestically through MyCash. 
On the central bank's website, it was confirmed that MyCash had been granted permission to issue e-money in this country from October 2nd, 2023. MyCash is a limited liability company incorporated on May 8, 2023 in Trinidad and Tobago by Digicel as a separate legal entity to manage its e-money issue business. The provisional registration allows MyCash to provide digital currency for a six-month period initially. MyCash is now the fourth e-money issuer not connected to a local bank, registered by the central bank following Paywise, TSCT's paper and Pesh money. Energy Minister Stuart Young met with Kelly Lochan, the President and Country Chair of Wutai Energy, on Tuesday. According to a release from the Ministry, during the meeting, Lochan updated the Energy Minister on Wutai Energy's assets in Trinidad and Tobago, inclusive of the natural gas production at the Angostura Field and the Calypso Project's deep water gas resource. In the release, Minister Young says the government is prepared to work with all energy stakeholders to drive investments towards the continued production of oil and gas in existing fields and to provide the further development of resources in Trinidad and Tobago. The ministry says a team of Woodside Energy representatives will be meeting with ministry officials later this year to continue the momentum generated with regard to Trinidad and Tobago's hydrocarbon resource development. The Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce has added a new category to its Champions of Business Awards program. In a release on Wednesday, the Chamber confirms that the Small and Medium Sized Enterprises Award category has been officially included and was officially released to the public on Tuesday, October 10, 2023. The concept behind the SME Award is to celebrate the contributions of the small and medium sized enterprises to the Trinidad and Tobago economy. It highlights their consistent growth and strong financial performance, customer service, strong leadership, potential for job creation, among other exceptional traits. Now for a look at today's energy and foreign exchange prices. Peter Christopher, CNC3 Business Watch. Thank you very much, Peter. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Since they were on sale, Laura bought these umbrella shoes without thinking. Literally, without thinking. Hungry for deals? You'd better come and satisfy it at KFC before doing something crazy. Wow Bucket. Seven pieces of chicken and four regular sides for $150. A finger-licking good deal. A high premium on quality, prices and service. The main attributes of Southern Food Basket Marketplace Point Fortin. A universe of variety with something for every shopper. Come to where the deals are bigger and better. Where you shop in comfort. Southern Food Basket Marketplace. Now serving with pride. Point Fortin. The moment my children came into my life, I do everything I can for them to live healthy, enjoyable lives. Nature's Ways Alive Kids Gummies are multivitamin gummies meant to support the development of children's bodies. They come in delicious fruit flavors and contain natural plant-based pectin. This means that if I'm looking for an alternative to animal-based gelatin for personal reasons, they are the best choice for my little ones. Choose Alive Kids Gummies by Nature's Way for your children because they deserve it. Companions, bad barbers, 
some things are better left to the professionals. We've got 101 reasons for you to shop at Quartz. Reason 100, save up to 60% on selected items store-wide. Save on select fridges, stoves, washers, smart TVs, and more. Get what you want today with no cash and make your first payment in 90 days. So there are 101 reasons to shop at Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. Promotion runs from September 26th. Conditions apply. The new KFC Nuggets have arrived. That unlike the no gets, ours are handmade using 100% white meat. After you try our delicious and crispy nuggets in the original recipe, you'll never settle for less. KFC, the real nuggets. It's finger licking good. So I always try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bottle of Omega XL. Strong heart, probiotics. Um, the turmeric, I can say I use this product and it works out. Our annual Diwali sale is here again. At Miguel Moses, we are offering incredible discounts and unbeatable prices. Sale starts on October 12th and ends on November 11th. Check out our stylish furniture pieces, rugs, kitchen, bath and bedding collection. Explore our range of curtain panels. Yes, we're talking blackout grommet curtains, curtains with balance, and matching kitchen curtains. Visit Miguel Moses today and let the festive spirit illuminate your home. Happy Diwali and happy shopping. Skin feeling dry? Swipe it away. New all-in-one Garnier Micellar Water with hyaluronic acid. Micelles work like a magnet to cleanse, remove makeup, and replump with hydration. New Micellar Cleansing Water with Hyaluronic Acid by Garnier, naturally. Ultimate Cricket Showdown has returned. The CG United Super 50 Cup is back in Trinidad. From October 17th to November 11th at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. Wingsback Oval and Hubie Speck. Come out and support your team. Visit windyscricket.com for more info. We're tracking several systems in the Atlantic Basins, particularly Tropical Storm Sean, which remains at a very weak strength and is forecast to meander out in the open Atlantic over the next several days. We now have Invest 94L, an active tropical wave that is forecast to remain at low latitude, moving towards the Lesser Antilles over the next week. It put, could potentially bring some heavy rainfall to our region by the end of next week, so something to monitor that's low chances of tropical cyclone formation. But before then, we have lots of dry air to our east, some very low, uh, weak pockets of low-level convergence moving towards Trinidad and Tobago. That will interrupt our mostly hot and sunny conditions. Now, looking at the forecast for us overnight tonight, generally settled skies, some isolated showers favoring Tobago and eastern parts of Trinidad with our minimum lows between 24 and 26 degrees. We still have this hot spell alert in effect for the country. That remains in effect until 4 p.m. October 16th, that's next week Monday, and high temperatures between 33 and 34 degrees are forecast for both islands over the next several days. So continue taking all of the precautions you've already been taking over the last few weeks and avoid strenuous activity during the hottest times of the day between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Now what to expect tomorrow? Mostly sunny, in fact, rainfall chances are quite low, looking out for an isolated stray shower favoring western parts of Trinidad with our maximum high coming in at around 34 degrees in Trinidad, 33 in Tobago. So walk with the water, the sunscreen and sunglasses as you head out tomorrow. But the hazardous seasonal, it still remains in effect for northern and northeastern coastlines of the country. Through 10 a.m. tomorrow, these long period swells still producing large breaking waves along these coastlines and choppy conditions in sheltered areas. So all marine interests need to exercise caution at least through 10 a.m. tomorrow. But we still have spring tides ongoing. So that means these higher than usual high tides and lower than usual low tides. So still continue taking precautions as we progress through the weekend. In open waters right now, sees a slight to moderate waves up to 1.5 meters in sheltered areas around one meter but still choppy because of those swells and taking a look at the next several days mostly hot and sunny with low chances of rainfall with that hot spell alert still in effect we now take a short break who's up the new guy remember this face i'll shoot it back <laughs> terrorists have taken possession of nuclear missiles if these babies go off it'll be world war three good to be back that's all if I do. Hurry! 
the biggest one you've got. Oh, it's way bigger than that. Expendables. Hurry, last few days at Movie Town Cinemas, South Park 10, Caribbean Cinemas, Trin City, Gemstone Cinemas, and Cine Central, Rice Plaza, Shawanas. We've got 101 reasons for you to shop at Ports. Reason 100, save up to 60% on selected items store-wide. Save on select fridges, stoves, washers, smart TVs, and more. Get what you want today with no cash and make your first payment in 90 days. So there are 101 reasons to shop at Courts. Courts, bringing value home. Promotion runs from September 26th. Conditions apply. Food Basket, Isles of Bargains. Shop and save big with Food Basket of Rima, Chamfle, and Shagwanas with bargains on every aisle. Neutrina Thigh, two pack for $19.95. Imperial Margarine, three for $19.95. Swiss Shortcut Pasta, four packs for $19.95. Hops, two quarts for $19.95. Swiss 750 ml Ketchup, three for $19.95. Waffy Wafers, five for $19.95. Cold Coffee, three and one coffee, eight for $19.95. Food Basket, Basket, where shopping is a pleasure and the price is right. Go from ah, to ah, from ow. relieve joint pain with Jameson's glucosamine chondroitin. One good thing has led to another. Make your taste buds go boom with Devon Digestive Bites. An explosion of great taste. Digestive Bites make your taste buds go boom. Clarity, it's what we want for our vision. Whether we're working in the office, during our nighttime commute, or watching our TV. Reduce reflections and glare with Supernova Anti-Reflective Coatings by Value Optical. The advanced technology in your new eyeglasses will reduce eye strain, help the world see you better, and enhance the way you see the world. Value Optical, expert care for your eyes. Combat the stress of today's busy lifestyles. Use Astamin Fort for all-round good health and balance. Astamin Fort contains power nutrients for that extra energy and vitality, eight essential amino acids and vitamins. Use Astamin Fort to boost energy, build stamina and strength, improve performance, relieve tiredness and stress, and improve memory and concentration. Astamin Fort is excellent supportive therapy for diabetes and hypertension. Get it now at leading pharmacies nationwide. Basket Arima, Chamfle, and Shagwanas. Shop and save big this month end with Food Basket Family Deals. 5 pound minced beef, $99. 10 kg flour, $74.95. 8 kg rice, $69.95. Big deal, 4 litre oil, $69.95. Food Basket is all about the family and great deals. 2 bale toilet paper, $89.95. 8 pound turkey drumstick, $99. 11 pound Tyson leg quarter, $79.95. Food Basket Arima. Chamfle and Chagunas. What should your parents use to fight inflammation? Omega XL. When you hurt in my boy, what do you think I should take, babe? My mommy and daddy should use Omega XL to fight inflammation. <laughs> Welcome back. Mental health is in focus this week as World Recognized Mental Health Day on Tuesday. Tonight, we take a look at ways to look after yourself physically as well as mentally with some help from friends. The Mustafa Foundation, which is an animal rescue organization in collaboration with AMCO, hosted an Adopt-A-Pet outreach. Janelle Bernard tells us more in tonight's Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by BioStrand. Get what you need naturally. Taking measures to ensure that you are in good health not only entails getting regular checkups, exercise, and eating right. It also requires looking after your mental health. And there are many ways to do so. They include making sleep a priority, fostering and maintaining healthy relationships, focusing on positivity, 
peer support, and seeking professional help when needed. While all of these do contribute to mental well-being, there is also another way to achieve this, and it's with the help of some furry friends. It is actually scientifically proven that petting or stroking an animal is the quickest way to relieve anxiety. It's the quickest way to relieve stress. Veterinarian Dr. Erin Lachman says while some dogs are bred to protect, <laughs> others are by nature gentle giants. Studies have shown that they reduce, they increase serotonin, they increase dopamine, which are the feel-good hormones. Dr. Latchman says not only do dogs aid in physical therapies, but they also help in providing an overall sense of well-being. Dogs help relieve stress, they bring down your blood pressure, they can help with Alzheimer's, with bipolar disorder, um, they bring structure to your life. And that goes both ways. Our dogs have a very strong ability to uh, recognize emotion, to recognize bonds with their, with their adopters. So you know uh, the mental health aspect on the dogs is immense. Where, and they show their appreciation by wagging their tails, by purring. So it, it brings them immense, immense joy. The Mustafa Foundation is seeking to find these dogs a forever home. So especially rescue dogs, they have the bond a lot stronger than regular dogs because you are now relieving their stress. You are taking them out of a stressful environment. Janelle Bernard, CNC3 News. Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by BioStrat. Get what you need naturally. All right, let's hand you over now to Jassy Marik. Thanks, Ryan. Another day filled with runs at the ICC World Cup. India's Rohit Sharma raises the 11th century of the tournament. We'll have some highlights after these. Nature's ways alive. Kids' gummies are multivitamin gummies meant to support the development of children's bodies like their bones, muscles, joints, brain, heart, and also their immune health. Choose alive kids' gummies by Nature's Way because they deserve it. Manage inflammation with Omega XL, a one-of-a-kind, powerful, natural anti-inflammatory supplement that has helped millions find relief from their pain. Just like world-renowned cricketer Kyron Pollard. I've been playing cricket for most of my life, and I don't know what it feels like to wake up and not be sore. If Omega XL works for me, it will work for you. Just like world-renowned cricketer Dwayne Bravo. Don't wait until it's too late. Take care of yourself, take care of your health with Omega XL. Live healthy, stay strong with Omega XL. Visit your local pharmacy or health food store today. Very first day they opened, my mother and my father and I came in here. I love to see it. It's neat, really, really neat. You know, we have many sections in Price Club. The food court section is a variety here. Any one of them you ask, they are very helpful. I love it. We get low price specials and everything every day. The prices are very, very good. It's cheaper than everywhere I've been. Combat the stress of today's busy lifestyles. Use Astamin Fort for all-round good health and balance. Astamin Fort contains power nutrients for that extra energy and vitality, eight essential amino acids and vitamins. Use Astamin Fort to boost energy, build stamina and strength, improve performance, relieve tiredness and stress, and improve memory and concentration. Astamin Fort is excellent supportive therapy for diabetes and hypertension. Get it now at leading pharmacies nationwide. Food Basket Arima, Chamflay and Chaguanas, where $10 is king. Yes, you heard right, your $10 is king. Three packs coconut milk, $10. Three bottles vinegar, $10. Three 237 ml Coca Cola, $10. Three 225 gram baking powder, $10. Six chubby for $10 and much more. Take advantage of 10 is king at Food Basket Arima, Chamflay and Chaguanas, where shopping is a pleasure and the price is right. Traffic, I am here, and I'll definitely be late because I still have to pass by the ATM to get cash for you. So, say, no, no, no. Don't put you on that. You can pay with cash. So, just come straight here. Yeah. 
NCash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use NCash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on NCash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Download the app and create your wallet today. So, I always try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bundle of Omega XL, Strong Heart, Probiotics, um, the turmeric. I can say I use this product and it works for me. Try the new darker, more delicious rodeo with chocolate and vanilla cream. You'll say. Smiles in every bite. Coming up on Caribbean Passport. Food and rum cravings acting up? Well, it's that time of year in Barbados. Over 1,000 runners on the streets of Port of Spain. It's the newest road race challenge. A Pan As premiere. It's all next on Caribbean Passport. CNC3, Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Welcome back. It's time for sport now. Well, it was all one-way traffic when Fatima College hosted QRC in the secondary school's football league today. Carsten Cupid has the highlights as the boys from Muko Upper Road flex their muscles on their rivals. At Fatima Ground, the host team in yellow couldn't wait to get this match going against QRC, and it showed. The deadlock broken in the fourth minute as QRC was caught trying to play out of the back, and Christian Bailey made them pay. But QRC drew level in a bizarre manner. This time, Fatima's goalkeeper, Tristian Edwards, punished for Diddy Dadlin. And the clearance fell to Stefan James, who fired into an empty net after 23 minutes of play. But that only seemed to motivate the defending Intercal champs, who regained the lead in the 37th, with Aidan Degans getting his first of the game. A lovely solo effort from Michael Shaves in the 42nd sent Fatima 3-1 up at the break. In the second half, Fatima turned on the style. Look at the ball movement and the dummy to open the back door. For Levi Smith, things beginning to get ugly for the Royalians. Fatima's fifth goal was sheer class. Quick short passes breaking into the box, bamboozling Jahim Afan, and Bailey had his second. In cricketing terms, the score went over the ropes when the Gans scored his brace in the 86, but Fatima wasn't done yet. Three minutes later, Bailey completed his hat trick. A day to remember for him and Fatima, and one to forget for QRC in a 7-1 final score. Kassan Cupid, CNC3 Sport. Not a day to remember at all for QRC. Fateful. Staying with football, TNT will host Group D of the CONCACAF Under-20 qualifiers in February 2024, as was determined at the draw held in to Miami today. The Under-20 Soka Warriors are also in that group, along with a highly regarded Canadian team, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Dominica. After round-robin play, the top two teams in each group and the two best third-place teams will advance to the quarter-final stage. The 27 teams in this competition were drawn into three groups of five, and three groups of four. The Trinidad and Tobago Premier Football League's Tier 2 Kings, Tobago's 1976 FC Phoenix, lifted their crown last night at the Dwight York Stadium after defeating Pitti Valley Dago Martin United two goals to one. The team from Canaan Bon Accord finished the season unbeaten, with head coach Nigel D'Souza quick to remind all of the fact that it has actually been two years since Phoenix last tasted defeat. They also ran unbeaten in the 2022 Tobago Football Association League title. And with a short off-season now coming up, before Tier 2 begins its 2023-2024 season, Phoenix is aiming to continue in such fine form. We want to provide the opportunity, not just for our players, but any talented Tobago player who wants to play professionally. I think it's time a Tobago team is in the, the Tier 1. And know that it is that in, uh, no longer the Pro League, but we believe that Tobago should have a professional team, and why not us? Um, we are the standard, so it's it's only it's only fitting that we lead that charge and and try to get up there. Uh, apologies once more. That was to be, uh, 1976 Phoenix FC head coach Nigel D'Souza. Former Trinidad and Tobago and Defence Force forward Devon Jostling describes himself as a student of the game. The TT Pro League's all-time top scorer has handed in his shooting boots for a stopwatch and whistle these days as he pursues a coaching career. 
already the holder of the TTFA's C license. He will begin his B license training in November, but he has already tasted the bittersweet life as a gaffer. Devon Jostling, school's football prospect, TT Pro League record goal scorer, national striker, and more recently, head coach of TTPFL Tier 2 team Harlem Strikers. When you win and you see the guys carry out the instructions and the things they have been practicing in training, you know, you, you, you go on a real, real high. And it's at this when nothing goes right on the, on the field and you, it's a real, real, real low. So for me, I'll describe it as a, a roller coaster. But he won't trade it for anything. It's a great feeling for me to try to, you know, educate and help young black men. You know, I was fortunate to pass through a lot of great coaches who was more than just coaches. Linton Bailey taught him the fundamentals. Ken Franco took over his education at Malik Secondary. Since then, names like Russell, Morris, Charles Fevrier, Shabazz, Latapi, and Marvin Gordon all pitched in. Now, on the other side of the touchline, he understands the importance of their tutelage. Man management is key. We we in a time where you can't really have a good players like say ten years ago. So for me, I try to be a father figure. You know, try to reach at their level at times. Jostling, he prays on Harlem striker Isaiah Bongo Leacock, who scored 13 and 13 and won the Golden Boot despite his detractors, as Harlem placed third in Tier Two. He counts the lost semi-final in Tobago as one of the season's highlights. I think my boys really stood up to the challenge, to the task at hand. Um, and to hear the Tobago crowd turn on their own team and start a back Harlem strike, that was a really, really proud moment for me. He says one day he'd love to helm the senior national men's team to further add to the positive influences that have come from MOVA. What I try to do is just inspire the youths by my actions because Sometimes I talk to them and it, they might, it might reach them. But the way how, how you move and you operate, I try to inspire them by that. Prouder still is the woman who brought him here. If I have to make a trial again, I make him never move. Jovan Ravello, CNC3 Sport. Some cricket news now. Cricket West Indies has announced the very first West Indies women's A-team tour with the Caribbean women set to visit Pakistan next week. In announcing the tour where the teams will play 350 over matches, CWI has announced the team as well. It will be captained by senior team player Rashada Williams, who is currently on in Australia rather on senior team duty, along with her vice captain Ashmini Munisa. Zayda James, Sherry Ann Fraser, Shabika Gajnabi, and several others are also in the squad. The Pakistan tour also includes a Tri-Nation T20 series with Pakistan and Thailand. Speaking of that Australia series, the West Indies captain Haley Matthews is she has recovered rather from injury for tonight's second ODI in Melbourne, which began a short while ago. We'll have full results in tomorrow night's sportscast. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force team will be looking for a 13th regional 50 over title when the Super 50 Cup starts right here in Trinidad and Tobago on Tuesday. Vice captain of the squad Joshua De Silva says he is relishing playing for the Red Force team. Always an honor to represent your country. Each and every time I step on the field, I put my best foot forward because this is what has given me the stepping stone in my career and it what started my career. So, um, yeah, always grateful to represent the red, white, and black. Now, no stranger to success in this competition, the Silver has won the Super 50 Cup as a member of the West Indies Emerging Players team back in 2019. Now, let's have a look at what's happening in the world of sport around the world. Starting with cricket, Rohit Sharma's century led India to an eight-wicket victory over Afghanistan in the ICC Men's World Cup today. Batting first, Afghanistan scored 272 for eight in 50 overs, with a top score of 80 from captain Hashmatullah Shahidi. India bowler Jasprit Bumrah got himself four wickets for 39 runs in his 10 overs. In reply, captain Sharma's excellent knock, smashing 16 fours and five sixes on his way to 131, set the base for India's successful chase and their second consecutive win in the tournament thus far. To tennis, top seed Carlos Alcaraz was defeated in the last 16 of the Shanghai Masters by Grigor Dimitrov. Will number two Alcaraz won three games in a row to take the first set, but Dimitrov fought back to win 5-7, 6-2, 6-4. The Bulgarian, who is seeded 18th, will face Chilean 22nd seed Nicholas Harry in the quarterfinals on Friday. Gymnastics now. Olympic gold medalist Mary Lou Retton is fighting for her life in an intensive care unit her daughter McKenna Kelly has announced. 
The 55-year-old Raton has been diagnosed with a very rare form of pneumonia and is not able to breathe on her own. She became the first American woman to win the all-round gold at the Los Angeles Olympics in 1984. Jovan Ravello, CNC3 Sport. Well, it was another tough day to be a Royalian, but Fatima leaves us, or rather you, on a high. Sport High, brought to you by Supplegen. Boost you up. Already up by four, Fatima captain Christian Bailey did his best artful dodger impression to run up the score, picking the pocket, then tiptoeing his way to a fifth for the blue and goal. A threat in either role, Bailey's industry earns him tonight's CNC3. Sports High. Sport High. Brought to you by Supplegen. Boost you up. Definitely a tough pill to swallow for myself, but that's the way we have to leave things in sport. We'll be back after these. Imagine a much-needed rest, sun, and sand. Let Supplegen make it happen. Win an all-inclusive trip for two to beautiful Montego Bay, Jamaica. Spend $25 or more in Supplegen products. Write your name and contact at the back of your bill and place it in the entry form box. Enter online via WooBox.com. Other prizes include over $6,000 in grocery vouchers. Promotion runs up to a first to November 30th and is LCD approved. Supplegen boost you up. Nature's Ways Alive Kids Gummies are multivitamin gummies meant to support the development of children's bodies like their bones, muscles, joints, brain, heart, and also their immune health. Choose Alive Kids Gummies by Nature's Way because they deserve it. Coming up on Caribbean Passport, food and rum cravings acting up? Well, it's that time of year in Barbados. Over 1,000 runners on the streets of Port of Spain. It's the newest road race challenge. A Pan As premiere. It's all next on Caribbean Passport, CNC3, Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Colgate Total gives you a superior antibacterial protection for home health health. It helps stop problems before they start. So your dentist ready. Mr. Walker. Oh, am I early? Be dentist ready with Colgate Total. So, I always try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bottle of Omega XL. Strong heart, probiotics, um, the turmeric. I can say I use this product and it works for me. Plumbing problems? Don't guess. Call Plumbing Solutions at 628-4646. Proud to be serving Trinidad and Tobago for over 20 years. We do it all. Maintenance and repairs, new construction, sewer lines, inspection, drain cleaning, leak detection. We are licensed and insured. So call Plumbing Solutions at 628-4646. At CBRS and the Trinidad Eye Hospital, we take care of all your family's eye care needs. Get comprehensive eye exams for the entire family and then get referred to our in-house ophthalmologist if needed. We have a wide variety of sunglasses and frames for adults and children and you can even get contact lenses too. Call us at 620-1025 today. You exercising to get fit and healthy, going to the rivers and beaches to spend time with the family, yet you leave any place dotty dotty. Whether it's Chancellor, Buko, the Savannah, or one of the streets by we, let us reduce, reuse, and recycle and clean up the country. No matter your age or gender, everyone can be a good defender. Get into green with Swim Call. We've come to the end of the 7 p.m. news. Thanks for watching. I'm Ria Rampoli. I'm Ryan Bechu. I am Jassi Marie. And I'm Kalein Hussain. Have a good night. Happy 18th anniversary CNC3 as we continue to cover your world.